and I was a part of the data platform team which was basically working on making a reporting platform. A lot of people are struggling these days to find the right team match. They get Either they get very less team matches or the teams are not really doing anything good. Somebody is actually going to interview for Google or they are preparing for Google. What did you feel that these were the set of topics that were like majorly present and you have to have to focus on it. It can be an advantage, it can be a disadvantage that you just have to prepare for DSA. Yeah. Like for example, if you interview for Uber, they ask you LLD as well, HLD as well, DSA as well, coding test, online coding test, everything is there. If you're appearing for an L4 role, right, they would really like to see if in the past company did you uh, see or did you show any ownership skills, any leadership skills. I know so many people who did so well in the uh, interview rounds, in the technical interview rounds, but didn't perform well in the Googliness rounds and then ended up getting rejected. So guys, before moving forward, there is a very important information that I would like to give you. So recently we wrapped our Elite 1.0 front-end development course and now we have launched our Elite 2 2.0 advanced front-end development course. This is a bigger and a better front-end development course that you need. This course doesn't need any particular prerequisite and we are going to take you from the very beginner level to the advanced level of front-end engineering. We have actually included projects like your own Repelit clone, Wix, Wix website maker clone, right, Uber clone and a lot of similar projects. We are going to make your own pop sub library based LLD driven projects and we are going to make sure that you learn important front-end design patterns as well. I'm going to list down all the projects and all the important design patterns here. This is the only course that you need if you are aiming for SD1 or SD2 or SD3 kind of roles because we are going to take everything to the very advanced level in front-end engineering. We are going to learn a lot of optimizations and we are going to see technologies like Next.js, Redux, Zustand, TypeScript, React and of course the latest version of React. This particular course is going to make sure that you have ample amount of projects that you can add in your resume. We are going to make approximately 20 plus projects with different variety of complexities, engineering problems and of course there will be a lot of discussion around the core concepts of front-end. So what are you waiting for? Check out the course link in the description below and you can use the coupon code mentioned in the description section to get maximum discount possible. See you guys in the cohort and let's get back to the video. Hello everyone. I'm Sanket Singh and welcome back to my channel. So guys, today we have uh, Ria with us, who is a seasoned software engineer who previously worked at companies like Flipkart and Microsoft. And she recently took a switch at Google as a software engineer. In this particular video, we are going to talk about her interview experience and preparation strategy that she used in order to crack all the interviews for Google for the software engineering role. So first of all, welcome Ria, welcome to the channel. Thank you. And first of all, if like for the new viewers on the channel, if you would like to uh, just introduce yourself, what do you do and how's your overall journey in tech has been? Sure. Uh, so hi everyone, my name is Ria and I've been in the industry for about four to five years. And I started my journey very early from um, I think Flipkart and I worked at Flipkart as a full-time software engineer. And then I switched to Microsoft and I've been working at Microsoft for about two to three years. And then recently I shifted to Google and I'll be joining, I have joined actually a Google Cloud team and I'll be working as a V3 at Google now. Cool, cool. Um, so I believe uh, you interviewed for the senior engineering roles at Google. So like, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to know how was your journey at Microsoft? What did you used to do at Microsoft and like uh, how you started applying for Google? When did you got this thought and so on and so forth? Like if you can throw some light there. Sure. So I think I joined as an L60 at Microsoft because I had taken a switch from Flipkart and I was there in the same team all throughout my journey and I was a part of the data platform team which was basically working on making a reporting platform and we were doing revamping work and I worked there for about two years and 10 months and then I think I realized I needed the switch and I wanted to work on something else. So I left Microsoft in about April and then I took a break. I was traveling and I was going a lot of places. And then I think later I realized that now I was sort of ready and I was feeling not exhausted and energized again to start a new company. So yeah, that's when I actually started interviewing for uh, companies, but I really just interviewed for Google, right? I had this notion in my mind that if Google didn't work out, then I would sort of, you know, go ahead and apply for other companies as well. But yeah, I think I applied for Google in the first uh, first part itself, right? And I think it did work out and I was quite um, happy with the offer and everything else and the team as well. I had a couple of team matches. Yeah, I think that worked out and then I think I joined last week um, Google and yeah, I've been sort of wrapping up with my team now. Got it, got it. So you interviewed for the L4 role at uh, software engineer L4 role at Google. So how's the process like? Like uh, what are the set of rounds? What's the What was the focus on each one of those rounds? 
what is the rounds eliminatory or like they were like a cumulative decision like if you can tell us more about that sure so i think uh, the process has been sort of standardized for the past one year i think india google india is hiring very aggressively for google cloud itself i think you also joined google cloud only when you started um so i think for the past one year and even for me the process was like it starts with a eliminatory round which is a phone screening round right and you have to solve one question in that and one follow up question in that and if you solve the question correctly then you move on to the rest of the rounds the rest of the rounds include three data structures and algorithms round so i interviewed for a l4 position and at the l4 position they are only asking data structures right now there's no system design round lldl jl nothing like that only dsa is what they focus on i didn't have any questions related to operating systems computer networks as well so even computer fundamental questions were not there at all and i had three coding rounds and all the coding rounds were i would say a sort of near to a lead code hard one of the rounds sort of have a lead code medium as well right and once you clear all the three rounds then you move on to the uh, googliness round which is again it looks like a behavioral round but i felt like it is very important at google to sort of you know pass uh, the rounds with a really good um, score as well so yeah i think that googliness uh, googliness round happened which goes about for one hour basic pretty standard questions that they ask and then i think if you everything comes if everything does go through well which it did for me right the recruiter simply says that you know your rounds are clear and we sort of have a positive call and then they go ahead with the team matches now i think that's where the pickle actually starts and a lot of people are struggling these days to find the right team match they get either they get very less team matches or the teams are not really doing anything good um luckily for me i had a lot of team matches i actually talked to a couple of uh, managers and then i think there were about four to five team matches i had and then i think in the end i ended up shortlisting and going ahead with the manager for the google cloud team who was working on persistent test so yeah i think that sort of was the process for me after i think now the uh, new thing that is happening is now the team match actually happens earlier and then i would say the hiring committee sits after that which sort of takes the accumulated i would say uh, result from your rounds from your team matches your manager responses and everything and then takes the decision whether they want to pass your packet is what they call they whether they want to pass your packet or finally for a hire or a no hire so yeah i think in my case it was a hire i think the manager also wrote like a very strong statement of focus for me which was sort of inclining towards that they would want me in my team and yeah i think the entire process took about i think two weeks i think two weeks would be the max it took my process was a little escalated but i feel like it usually takes about a month to complete all the four five rounds and then i think the offer gets rolled out the next week and since i was not working at microsoft i did not really have a notice period to serve so i think that also inclined the manager a little bit yeah and i think after two weeks only i joined google so yeah my entire process sort of lasted like a month got it got it yeah like a lot of things have actually changed like during my time at google hiring committee used to happen first and then team match used to happen right. uh, there used to be four dsa rounds uh, earlier uh, after the eliminatory and uh, now they are also focusing more on the googliness round right. altogether so that's a bit much yeah i i totally understand the point now considering the fact that like google has been like notoriously famous for the fact that they ask relatively harder questions or at least above medium questions altogether when compared to the remaining set of companies so what were like i understand that you cannot like tell us the exact set of questions but what were the set of topics that were more focused on and let's say somebody is actually going to interview for google or they are preparing for google what did you feel that these were the set of topics that were like majorly present and you have to have to focus on it so what was in the case of your set of prompts okay so i think i actually read a couple of interview experiences now that could be on blind or that could be on lead code it could, it could be some medium articles also and i wanted to sort of focus my preparation like that you could call it a advantage or a disadvantage but like google only asks dsa rounds at l4 so compared to other companies which would also ask you you know hld lld right machine coding rounds right you have to prepare sort of in a very vast way for those companies but i think for google they only ask dsa but that to the level is slightly higher but what i could see from a couple of interview experiences earlier was that they were mostly focusing on graphs dynamic programming is what i could see was standing out in most of the interview processes so i think i also focused a lot on that during my preparations and i think that in the interview process also i could see pretty much the same thing i think uh, like again like you said i cannot disclose all the questions but i think 
two of my rounds focus very heavily on dynamic programming only a little bit uh, one of the rounds was in graph as well right and my phone screening round focused uh, it started with a hash map question but then it evolved into a greedy uh, as well so yeah i think greedy and hash map is also i saw a couple of people mentioning about that and it's also being asked but yeah i feel like in the interview experiences also that i read and even for me i think graph and dynamic programming was something that really stood out and i could see that visibly most of the interviewers were asking questions related to that got it got it yeah in fact like similar fact with mine as well like my two rounds had like heavy graph questions and two of my rounds were having like heavy D, uh, dp questions apart from the eliminatory so i guess like if you are preparing for google i believe uh, dp and graph should be something that you definitely should spend some time on as uh, ria also mentioned and i like i have also read this on lead code that most of the people are getting questions around graph are getting questions around dp altogether so like now like i totally resonate with your fact as well that it can be an advantage it can be a disadvantage that you just have to prepare for dsa yeah. like for example if you interview for uber they ask you LLD as well, HLD as well, DSA as well, coding test, online coding, everything is there. But in Google, you have like just the DSA round, you focus on DSA, you get through. So uh, like, how did you prepare for it? Like you mentioned that you were thinking that, okay, you will interview for Google and if it didn't work out, then maybe you will try to explore other opportunities and you cracked it in the one shot. But like, how did you prepare for it? Were you like uh, specifically focused on like very hard questions? Did you have the magic number in your mind that, okay, I have to like solve it, X, Y, Z number of questions that a lot of people nowadays do that they have solved 400 questions, 500 questions. So were you having that kind of magic number in mind? How did you use to approach the questions? How did you filter out the relevant question? What was the strategy of that? I think, um, okay, so because it was Google and I, I, I knew that they are going to ask TSA, I did not do anything apart from uh, lead code, right? I knew there was no point of, even though it is relevant for a senior suite, no system design, LLE, HLE, but I knew that was not really a part of the interview process at all. So I was not really doing any of that. I think on lead code, uh, what you have to realize while interviewing for Google specifically is that most questions would be lead code hard. Just the wrapper that the Google puts on top of it just modifies the story a little bit behind the question. But eventually, most of the questions that they ask would turn down and tone down into a lead code hard question, which you would have already seen as well. There's a very high probability for that. But they just twist the question a little bit, story a little bit, so that, you know, it's not too easy for you. And you have to sort of, you know, demystify the question a little bit, dig around a little, and then really know what the concept that they're asking is so yeah i was only focusing on lead code i was solving a bunch of questions on lead code related to mostly graphs and dynamic programming first then i moved a little bit on trees as well 3d algorithms right and then hash maps and then a little bit of stack and things as well but yeah i was not really going a lot deeper into that i solved a lot of questions again i first focus on the questions that have been previously asked right and then once i knew that i had solved a couple of questions around that then i started going and you know solving some random questions I had no number in mind, like you asked, I was just trying to be as comprehensive and first I was trying to mostly revisit the topics that I've already done. But yeah, I think that turned out uh, good for me. I could solve a lot of questions. I could sort of resonate patterns as well. Later when I knew a question I'm doing and then, you know, I could already see the pattern behind that question. I was not really coding that question because I could recognize that, you know, this is something related to like, for example, if I'm doing articulation points, after a point, I could resonate reading the question itself that, you know, it's going to come as an articulation point question itself. So I was not really going to deep into it. My idea was to cover and read a vast number of questions so that once i get a question in the interview i am not blindsided i feel like you know ye to pada hua hai times i would have already read it before so yeah i think that was what worked for me um I mostly focused on lead code read a couple of interview experiences gave a little bit of you know some uh, rounds as well where you have to focusly work on and in a fixed time you have to solve questions because i think with google in 45 minutes you have to solve one complete question and then you have to do follow-up question as well right if you are not able to do the first question that is pretty much a no hire from the interviewer if you're able to do the first question and then sort of tell the answer for the other question but not really code it that's also a lean hire but yeah I think doing the first question itself, coding it fully, it should not be a running code, but it should be a good working code, right? Doing that was very, very important. So I feel like with Google, they're very picky about the fact that, you know, they, they will not leave any corner unturned. In 45 minutes, you have to do both the questions. You have to write the code for both the questions. You have to tell the time and space complexity as well. And you should be able to prove your code as well. For example, for one of my rounds, I was able to do a hash map question and then I was able to tell a greedy approach 
but i think the time sort of ran up when i was trying to tell the proof of 3d which is very difficult right with dynamic programming it's usually slightly easier to provide the proof but with 3d questions people struggle and that was i think a little bit happened with me as well but yeah i think this is what pretty much my strategy was i was just daily solving a couple of questions and then i think i started it got it got it yeah like i believe uh, sometimes in greedy people can ask you proofs of that because they are pretty intuitive to think but in order to prove the correctness that actually adds some complexity to the problem and uh, if it is dp then of course it's brute force and then optimized so that that that's good and like how did you prepare for the googliness round like uh, a lot of people like if you see blind if you see lead code a lot of people specifically ask this question that what can we expect in the googliness round like did they do they like ask you some of your past projects or uh, they just ask them uh, it's a non technical question how was the round like and like how did you approach it um i think for googliness round the questions are pretty standard but do not take them lightly at all they they play equal weightage to your hiring in the final when the packet is going to be passed i think uh, questions are related to your past projects the questions are related to your work experiences and they would really if you're appearing for a l4 role right they would really like to see if in the past company did you uh, see or did you show any ownership skills any leadership skills so i feel that is also a criteria they judge you on but yeah i feel like apart from that the question of pretty standard like you know some experience that you have worked on explain a project that you're really proud of explain a problem that you worked out right and explain a project which you owned end to end right do you look any inspiration for your work what are your goals in the past 5 years 10 years and what's the reason for joining google i feel like these are pretty standard questions that they ask but again they're not looking for standard answers as such they would really like to see that have you made any impact in the previous work that you've done and do you really sit and fit well with the google culture or not and i feel like they're very specific about what they require over here and i know so many people who did so well in the uh, interview rounds the technical interview rounds but didn't perform well in the googliness rounds and then ended up getting rejected so yeah i feel like with other companies it may not be the case where it is usually behavioral round is sort of like a formality but yeah i think definitely not with google where they prioritize this round a lot and yeah uh they do focus on it and i feel like one very good way to prepare for this is just to like have some notes prepared right a uh, one day before your interview just have your notes prepared on what you've really done right and highlight a few experiences that you've done and some ownership skills and you should be pretty good off like that got it got it one 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 last question that a lot of people actually ask is that uh they're not getting the calls all together and like uh, they are applying with referrals sometimes without referrals sometimes but they are not able to reach out to the recruiters the Re recruiters are not reaching out to them they're not getting a call back so what was the case uh with you like uh did you apply with the referral or how it actually worked out for you or any any tips that you can give our viewers that if they want to also get a call because a lot of the students that actually watch our videos i know that they have uh, prepared decently but the only problem is that they are not getting the opportunity the right time when they can start interviewing so any tips that you can provide on that particular front uh, to the viewers i think my case would not be very relatable in this scenario but i will talk a little bit about how you can uh, basically go ahead and try to get your interview scheduled uh, for my case the interviewer was sort of like a old recruiter who had been reaching out to me for the past two years when i was applying actually at microsoft and he wanted to see that if i would be interested to interview for google as well but i think at that point my microsoft offer had already rolled out and i was not really confident about that level of data structures and algorithms so i did end up uh, i would say taking the interviews but i think later uh i think when i wanted to really uh, shift uh, and switch from companies i think i just called that recruiter and because he was already in touch with me he had my already resume scanned so i didn't really have to go through the referral process i just like called him and tell that you know i i'm uh, i'm okay to interview now for google and i feel like i'm prepared so i think my interview process just started like that without any referral or resume scanning but yeah in general yes it is a little tricky to get your um i would say resume shortlisted and then sort of go ahead and you know um start your interview process but i feel like this uh, process again would be to reach out to as many people as you can on linkedin you never know who actually ends up um, you know ref uh, providing you a referral referral do helps right but you need to make sure that you're reaching out to right people i always say this in my videos as well that you know reaching out to engineering managers is very very fruitful try reaching out to them and you know see if they would be open to give referrals and keep applying 
right i also i think applied in google when i was in college 2018 and 2019 i did not get any replies but i still used to apply at every opening um, you know that i could find because it just takes one good referral and one good response for you to actually start your interview process so don't feel like that you're not getting response so you should stop trying keep applying keep reaching out to people keep your uh, keep your referral game up right start uh, getting to know more people any opportunity that you get right make sure that you are making the most of it right and reaching out to recruiter is also a way on like but i feel like they pretty much ghost most of the time if they are not actively looking for candidates so start asking referral from software engineers and managers and i think that should be good for you. cool cool that makes sense that makes sense altogether so i guess these were the set of questions that i wanted to ask you and uh, not just me but i believe every viewer watching the video must be wishing you all good luck uh for your upcoming journey at google i believe you will get a lot of new uh, technical experience new cultural experience at google and get a lot of chance to learn on a lot of new things and also contribute as a individual contributor as a software engineer at google in the google cloud team and if you guys have any questions i would highly recommend you guys to just drop them down in the comment section below i'll try to answer them as much as possible altogether if you have any specific questions in your mind regarding the google interview process and if you have any doubt corresponding to that feel free to ask and if you have not yet liked the video do consider liking the video and hit the subscribe button on the channel so that you can get all the important notifications that we are going to put on the channel that being said let's wrap this particular video here and we are going to meet you in the next set of videos till then take care guys bye bye i am sanket singh signing off